Hey guys, so today I will be reviewing the Gigabyte B250 FinTech motherboard. This is a special motherboard designed for mining. And we're going to see what's special about this one and if you should buy one or not. So let's start with the unboxing. And I already opened it before, so that's why it's already out of the anti-static bag. Let's put this aside. And we have the accessories provided by Gigabyte, which we will check later. So let's focus on the motherboard for now. And this motherboard is an Intel LGA 1151 socket. So this is for generation seven and eight of Intel CPUs. And as you can see, it has a lot of PCIe Express ports. So we have here one 16X and then two PCIe 1X. So that's two, four, six, eight, 10, 11, plus the other one, that's 12. So you can plug in 12 graphics card in total if you have a powerful power supply, of course, which can power all these graphics cards. Here we have four memory slots. This is dual channel. That's why you see these two different shades of gray and black. And this is auxiliary power. So if you have actually more than a few graphics card, if you max out the PCIe ports, you should plug in Molex cables here to provide additional power. And this is to prevent uh, the motherboard from shutting down. Here we have the traditional front panel header. So this is a normal motherboard. It just has a lot of PCIe Express support. And it comes with the IO shield, which we don't care about. And this is very, very nice of Gigabyte to provide us with. This is a three-way splitter. So in case you want to power a lot of hungry graphics card, you just plug it in one side and then you can uh, add two more PSUs. So you can have three PSUs powering the whole rig. So this is pretty important if you will have 12 power hungry graphics card. And then we have the SATA cables. So Gigabyte provides two of them. This is for your SSD. And what I want to focus on is, is this uh, module. If I can open it, that is. So here it is. This little module has foam on one side so you don't come in contact. Whoops, we have an intruder. Okay, go away, cat. This is not your time to play. This is very sensitive <laughs> electronics. So the, like I was saying, this is a little module. It has foam on one side so you don't touch the circuit. And then we have a power button and reset button. So basically you just plug it in the front panel header. There is only one way to plug it in if the camera wants to focus. Okay, as you can see, one side doesn't have any place for a pin. So you just take this and you plug it at the right side of this uh, module header. So there is only two places you could plug it in and actually only one works. So I'm going to show you. So this is at the very end of the right side. So you just plug it and you're good to go. You have your power button and your reset button. Just press and the whole machine starts.
So here we have the PS2 for your old keyboard or mouse, USB 2.0. This is VGA, TVI for your integrated graphics card. This is pretty useful if you have an AI GPU. And then you have USB 3, Ethernet and your audio ports. Now let's have a look at the BIOS. So let's check the memory settings. You can here specify your XMP profile if you have uh, a good quality RAM. And then let's check the most important part of the whole BIOS. This is the max link speed. This is for PCIe. And you should choose Gen 2 or Gen 1. I don't leave it at auto. This is to maximize stability. And then if you check here, you will you'll see that we have a mining mode. This is not something crazy. It doesn't do anything special. It just presets some values in the mine, in the, in the BIOS. So basically above 4G decoding, it's enabled and PCIe Express is to Gen 2. That's all it does. And it should be on by default. I leave the initial display output to the iGPU in case I don't want to use uh, my graphics card. And I will explain why I don't do that. I use a uh, DVI dummy plug for remote control. Finally, we have one very useful part of this BIOS is this AC back, which can be always off, always on memory. And when it's always on, it will always turn on if there is a loss of power. So computer restarts or there is no electricity. When it comes back, it will turn on automatically. So that's it for the review. And all in all, pretty simple motherboard, which I can recommend. I already bought two of these and they're pretty stable. Haven't had any problems so far, except for issues with my own power supply. But no trouble recognizing graphics card, stability is top notch. Little module is not so expensive stuff. You can buy it on Amazon for a few dollars, a few euros, but still you don't need to go do that because it's included in the package. And I've had a few BIOS updates, so I'm pretty satisfied with this. I also have a BioStar uh, motherboard and uh, MSI, which I will show in other videos. So this is my first video here. I'm not going to ask to subscribe for now, but if you have questions, uh, post a comment down below. I will try to answer and see you maybe in another video. I have a lot more coming up. Bye-bye.